Hi, it's Christina with the Sisyphean Journal, and I think the story today kind of dispel dispels the myth that the legalization fairies sprinkle safety dust and women don't die horrible deaths ever again. They, people who believe in the legalization fairy, might want to speak to Luann Heron's father, Mike Gibb who wept silently in the courtroom as he listened to witnesses describe how his 33-year-old daughter bled to death on April 17, 1998, after a late abortion at the now defunct A to Z Women's Center. Medical assistant Sylvia Aragon wept on the witness stand as she said that Luann's pregnancy was too far along for an abortion. The ultrasound Aragon did on April 9th showed a 26-week fetus but Dr. John Biskind kept ordering more and more ultrasounds to try to get a scan that would document the pregnancy as being early enough for the abortion to be legal. So Arizona law was, oh gosh, anti-choice and a little bit persnickety about aborting babies that could be born alive and survive. So a total of seven ultrasounds were done in order to get one that could be interpreted as only 23 weeks the day prior to the abortion. So the abortion was performed at 1.30 p.m. Now Biskind's lawyer said that Biskind noted a small amount of blood on the sheets when he checked on Luann after the abortion, but he was not concerned because bleeding is normal after an abortion. But two medical assistants testified that Luann was very frightened about her condition as she lay in recovery. She became combative and anxious. She reported that her legs were going numb. She cried out in pain as she lay in a puddle of blood, begging to know what was wrong with her. And these, emergency physician John Gallagher testified, are all clear signs of severe blood loss. Gallagher, who trains paramedics for the Phoenix Fire Department, said that the records he reviewed clearly indicated that Luann's condition was life-threatening and that Biskind should have recognized the severity of her injuries. Her medical records clearly indicated serious trouble at 1.25 p.m., 16 minutes after she'd been taken into the recovery room. Gallagher said that if he had been treating Luann, he would have ordered more IV fluids and blood immediately and summoned an ambulance to take her to a hospital where she could be treated in a properly equipped operating room. But, Gallagher noted, instead of recognizing the danger his patient was in, Biskind tried to calm Luann and reassured her that she would be just fine. He tinkered with the IV while complaining there was no qualified nurse on staff to do this and left the building at around 345. Clinic administrator Carol Stewart Shadoff had a staffer page Biskind 15 minutes later when Luann's condition worsened. Biskind didn't return to the clinic but just told his staff to call 911 and prosecutors estimate that by the time paramedics were summoned, Luann had lost two to three liters of blood. When the rescue crew arrived, Fire Captain Brian Tobin testified, Luann actually appeared dead. Nobody at the clinic seemed to be aware of how grave her condition was, he said, and nobody seemed to be helping her in any way. The only thing anybody had done for her was put on an oxygen mask. And evidently somebody had removed Luann's IV because there wasn't one in place to allow life-saving medications to be quickly administered. Nobody had put in an endotracheal tube and started bagging her to be sure that her body was getting enough oxygen to, su su to sustain life. Tobin said, I very quickly felt there wasn't a lot of competent medical care going on at the time. The abortion lobby would have us believe that you don't need to regulate abortion clinics because they're always just staffed by the most competent, caring people. The staff had told rescuers that Luann's vital signs were pulse 100 and blood pressure 90 over 50. And Tobin testified, it was very difficult for me to believe that they could get the vital signs of a woman who, even as we walked in the door, looked really dead. And Luann was pronounced dead at the hospital. Now, Biskind surrendered his license to practice medicine in Arizona after Luann's death in order to stop the ongoing medical board investigation of the circumstances of his handling the case. Once you surrender your license, the medical board has no authority over you and they can't investigate. But this wasn't enough to stop the police investigation. 
Both Biskind and the clinic administrator, Carol Stewart Shadoff, were charged with homicide. A jury of seven women and one man immediately agreed that the defendants were guilty. It was simply a matter of deciding which charge they were guilty of, the manslaughter charge or the lesser charge of negligent homicide. It took them four and a half hours to decide that Biskind was guilty of manslaughter and Stuart Shadoff of negligent homicide. Only after the trial was over did members of the jury learn of Biskind's history of misconduct, including the death of a previous abortion patient named Lisa Bardsley. The jury foreman said that this information makes me feel better about my decision. One guilty party, however, was not held accountable, the clinic's owner, Dr. Moshe Hakamovich. Hakamovich himself had performed fatal abortions on Tanya Williamson, Luz Rodriguez, and Christina Gosvine, and Jamie Garcia died after a safe and legal abortion at Hakamovich's Texas facility. So that's a total of six dead patients, either directly under his care or under his supervision. Yeah, the legalization fairy evidently did not sprinkle her magic dust on Moshe Hakamovich's clinics.